In the thrilling annals of aviation history, a saga unfolds of ambitious aircraft projects, some destined for greatness, others doomed to infamy. Among these tales, the Beechcraft Starship stands out, a beacon of ambition in the executive turboprop arena, launched by Beechcraft in the roaring mid-1980s. The Beech Starship program, a behemoth of failure, begs the question, what led to this catastrophic misadventure? It's a classic narrative of missteps and miscalculations, decisions made amidst ever-changing scenarios spiralling into a debacle. The story takes us back to the early 80s. Beach, freshly under the wing of Raytheon, a titan in high tech, faced a daunting aviation recession. The looming shadow of an oil crisis, with predictions of a world starved of oil, not just the affordable kind, loomed large. Turboprops, with their frugal fuel appetite, seemed like the knights in shining armour against the backdrop of fuel-guzzling jets. Beach, riding the success of the King Air, the reigning champion of turboprops, was plotting a successor. The mission? To engineer an aircraft surpassing the King Air in prowess and cost efficiency. An audacious vision was needed. Enter Bert Rutan, the maverick young designer famed for his extraordinary, home-built canard configured, pusher propeller, fiberglass marvels. It was a union of a general aviation powerhouse and a visionary designer. A partnership destined for the stars, yet fated for a spectacular downfall. What could possibly go wrong? As it turned out, everything. In the realm of aviation, where pioneers constantly seek groundbreaking innovations, there's always someone with a radical, untested concept ready to turn dreams into reality. In the early 1980s, this spirit was epitomised by the buzz around composite construction, specifically the use of carbon fibre reinforced plastic. This revolutionary material promised to slash airframe weight significantly, and in the world of aviation, lighter means better. Faster speeds, greater payload capacity, and enhanced fuel efficiency. By integrating carbon fiber into its design, Beechcraft aims to elevate the Starship's performance to new heights. The innovative pusher propellers were another race up the Starship's sleeve. Known for generating more thrust at the same power compared to the conventional tractor configuration, these propellers also had the added advantage of being positioned behind the cabin, offering passengers an experience akin to jet travel, smoother and quieter. August 1982 marks the turning point when the Starship project began its journey from vision to reality. This new aircraft promised to revolutionise business aviation. Boasting a cruising speed of 400 miles per hour, a range of over 2,000 miles, the capacity to transport 10 passengers, all while weighing less than 12,500 pounds, it was set to outperform the King Air in speed and capability. The Starship's design could have followed the conventional path, with a standard wing and tail like its contemporary, the Piaggio Avanti. However, the allure of Bert Rutan's futuristic canard designs was irresistible, despite the challenges they posed. One notable issue in Rutan's past designs, such as the Very Easy, was the rearward center of gravity, CG, which could cause the unladen aircraft to tip over, resting on its tail rather than the nose gear, a quirk Beechcraft was well aware of. Yet, the excitement and promise of innovation outweighed these concerns in the pursuit of a revolutionary aircraft. In their quest to blend futuristic aesthetics with practical aerodynamics, the Beechcraft Starship's design team faced a complex challenge achieving the right balance with the aircraft's center of gravity, CG. To attain this sleek, avant-garde look and maintain CG practicality, the Starship's wings were designed with significant sweep. While wing sweep exudes speed and reduces drag at high velocities, typically above Mach 70, it introduces more complications than advantages at the turboprop speeds for which the Starship was designed. The drawbacks? A swept wing is structurally less efficient, meaning heavier and undermines stability. However, the Starship's canard configuration presented an upside. A canard, or forward wing, is generally more efficient than the conventional rear tail design as it contributes to lift rather than creating balancing downforce. To ensure safe stall behaviour, the canard must stall before the main wing, allowing the nose to pitch down and facilitate recovery. But this design required the Starship's forward wing to be oversized 
to maintain lift and control at lower speeds with flaps extended, without stalling at higher speeds. The solution? A complex mechanism to sweep and unsweep the forward wing as needed. This critical dependency on the forward wing sweep for performance and stall characteristics necessitated extensive monitoring and backup systems, adding to the aircraft's weight and complexity, and thus diminishing its performance. To achieve the ambitious speed targets, each craft powered the Starship with a beefier version of the Pratt & Whitney PT-6 engine, boasting 1,200 shaft horsepower. This power increase, however, led to higher fuel consumption. To compensate and meet range requirements, Beechcraft sacrificed two passenger seats for additional fuel capacity, reducing the seating to eight. Yet, the hurdles extended beyond aerodynamics. The Starship's cutting-edge cockpit became a logistical nightmare. Ensuring the reliability of the numerous screens required an almost flawless cooling system. At that time, Electronic Flight Instrument Systems EFIS, existed but the displays were essentially TV tube images of conventional instruments. Unable to integrate all primary flight instruments into a single display, the Starship's design team opted for an EFIS display for each instrument, resulting in 16 individual TV tubes in the cockpit. These tubes not only consumed significant electrical power, but also emitted substantial heat. Consequently, the avionics cooling fans were no less than vital for the operation of this airplane of the future. The Starship's journey through the complex skies of aviation innovation led to a schism in the aviation community. On one side, enthusiasts believed in the Starship's ambitious promises, a blistering 400 mph cruise speed, jet-like smoothness and quietness, and a range nearing 2,000 miles. On the other, skeptics doubted the feasibility of a plastic airplane with an unconventional design, predicting the program's failure. But a third, more nuanced outcome loomed. The Starship might be built and certified, yet failed to excel in any aspect, especially when compared to its competitors. Unfortunately, this middle ground became the Starship's reality. The allure of composite construction quickly faded as it failed to deliver the anticipated weight savings. The Starship's escalating empty weight threatened to ground the program, but salvation came in the form of the FAA's new commuter category certification. This category, more stringent in structure and performance requirements than the small airplane category initially targeted, allowed for a higher takeoff weight, although it added to the aircraft's heft. The Starship's final ramp weight exceeded 15,000 pounds, far from its initial targets. Achieving the required flying qualities necessitated numerous adjustments, yet Beechcraft persisted. Ultimately, the Starship emerged as the most stable aircraft in Beech's fleet, sailing smoothly through turbulence. However, this stability came at the cost of increased drag, contributing to the aircraft's failure to meet its performance objectives. The forward wing configuration did not yield the expected efficiencies, further impacting its performance. The Starship was, in many ways, too revolutionary for its time. While it was technologically prepared for the future, the market was not. The economic recession at its launch and the hefty price tag, $3.9 million for the original 2000 model and $4.7 million for the 2000A, placed it in the same range as jet aircraft, deterring potential buyers. The pioneering spirit of the Starship, while admirable, was met with hesitation and economic barriers, hindering its success in a market not yet ready for such groundbreaking aviation firsts. Raytheon's strategy to bolster the Starship's market appeal and dispel doubts about its reliability involved an unusual sales tactic, offering free maintenance to Starship owners. However, this well-intentioned move backfired dramatically. Existing owners seized this opportunity, frequently opting for extensive and, at times, superfluous maintenance work. This surge in maintenance activity inadvertently painted the Starship as a high-maintenance, unreliable aircraft in the eyes of prospective buyers. Consequently, the Starship transformed from a potential revenue generator into a financial sinkhole for Raytheon. The cost of maintaining the fleet, combined with sluggish sales, turned the Starship into a costly endeavor. Despite Raytheon pouring an astonishing estimated $1 billion into the project, the business aviation market remained largely unresponsive. By 1991, only 11 purchase orders had been secured, 
a meagre number compared to expectations. During this period, the aviation market witnessed the entry of smaller, more efficient executive jets, priced similarly to the turboprop Starship. These jets challenged the Starship's unique selling points, including its once-promised unparalleled performance. Competitors like the Piper Cheyenne demonstrated comparable speed without resorting to the Starship's complex and exotic design. The first Starship was delivered with much fanfare at the 1989 Paris Air Show in France. However, it was plagued with numerous issues, earning the unflattering nickname Hangar Queen due to its frequent maintenance needs and downtime. Facing subdued demand and the continued success of its King airline, Beechcraft pivoted to offering the Starship through leasing in 1991, hoping to attract customers wary of outright purchasing such a high-maintenance and costly aircraft. This shift to leasing was a clear sign of the struggles faced by the Starship in carving out its niche in the competitive world of business aviation. Despite its innovative design and ambitious goals, the aircraft failed to gain traction in the market. After just seven years from its certification, Beechcraft produced its 53rd and final Starship model in 1995, marking the end of its production but not the end of its story. The ghost of the Starship continued to haunt Beechcraft, leading to the eventual decision in 2003 to dismantle the remaining fleet due to unsustainable support costs. The Starship's narrative stands out in the annals of aviation failures for several reasons. Uniquely, it transitioned from concepts to reality, a rarity for many ambitious aviation projects. Unlike many failed airplane ventures, the Starship was fully certified and produced, and notably, no customer lost their deposit on the aircraft. While Raytheon's shareholders may have felt the financial strain, Beechcraft managed to avoid directly impacting the aviation public with this failure. However, the true tragedy of the Starship lies in the missed opportunities for the wider aviation industry. The colossal investment, estimated to be close to $2 billion in today's dollars, could have been channeled into enhancing a proven and successful design, such as the King Air. Imagine an improved conventional turboprop with a larger cabin, a more fuel-efficient wing design, and modern systems and materials for lower maintenance costs. The King Air 350, already a bestseller, could have been significantly advanced with these investments. The Starship, often hailed for its high-tech and futuristic design, ultimately stands as a monument to failure. Raytheon's ambitious moonshot resulted in an exotic-looking aircraft that fell short in every aspect compared to its more conventional and less expensive counterparts. The immense financial resources poured into the Starship could have instead led to the development of a truly remarkable aircraft, elevating the entire aviation industry. In this regard, the Starship's legacy is not just a tale of technological overreach, but a lesson in missed opportunities and the importance of focused and pragmatic innovation in aviation. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on our latest posts. Thank you for your support.